Hey, you're listening to Innovators Can Laugh, the fun startup podcast. I'm your host, Eric Melcher. On ICO, we interview an innovative entrepreneur in the European tech startup scene every week. My goal is to have my guests share their wisdom while having a little fun in the process. Now let's dive in. Robert, how are you doing today? Great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Eric. Yeah, no, no. I've been looking forward to this because, you know, you, I think you're familiar with Kurtos. And uh, for those listening, Kurtos is this Hungarian des- uh, dessert that is so delicious. And uh, Robert, do they make good Kurtos in Kluge? Can you find that there? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Although, uh, actually, actually, I'm from another county uh, in Romania. It's it's called Hargita. And that's, that's exactly, that's exact, actually where the Kurdish is from. So if you want, if you want the original one, then, then go there. So I'm definitely <laughs> familiar with that. <laughs> yeah. well, very, very cool. So you speak Hungarian too, is that correct? Yes, that is in fact my native language. Yes. All right. All right. Somebody was telling me I was going somewhere and they said, Eric, just, just, you know, just a reminder, they only speak Hungarian, uh, at that place. And I said, well, it makes no difference to me because, you know, I don't really speak Romanian that well either. So, (laughs) (laughs) so, okay. As we get started, I like to ask my guests a few uh, quirky questions just so we can get to know your personality a little bit better. Uh, Robert, for you, the first question I have for you is what is an unusual food or drink that you consume an unusual food or drink Mm. yeah well to be honest i can i can't really say i'm i'm consuming anything unusual yeah i like i like indian food though so that's it it can be it can be considered unusual in in this place you know I, I really like uh, I really like Indian food because it's spicy. I like I like spicy. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's that's about it for the drink. Uh, well, I I used to I used to try out all these cocktails, you know, alcoholic beverages. But I don't I don't drink uh, for a few years now. Uh, I gave up because of indie hacking because of the personal projects that I have and yeah. you know want to make progress on them. So. No, pretty, pretty traditional, pretty, pretty conservative in this side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is funny because, you know, over a billion people eat Indian food, right? And there's not, there's not a lot of restaurants that are Indian restaurants here in Romania. That, that's a good point there. Uh, okay, let's see here. Second question for you. Tell me about a time when you had 15 minutes of fame. 15 minutes of fame. 15 minutes of fame. Yeah, I think, I think they were mostly due to, uh, viral tweets. I, I would, <laughs> I would say not really, not really anything. Or if you mean, if you mean live, if you mean live, well, I actually held some, some tech talks, uh, in, in on, for the company I, I work for. So, you know, with, with actually external audience. So it wasn't just for, for my colleagues. Uh, okay. That was like, that was like the first step, but then I, then I had some, some technical cause Java related tech cause, uh, tech uh, presentations for, for an external audience with representatives from multiple companies. So there was a pretty big audience, you know, yeah, you really guessing? out of way out of my comfort zone. Yeah, of, of course. <laughs> uh, but it went well. I mean, once you, once you get into the flow, I would say once you get into the flow and just, you know, just focus on the content, just focus on, on how to, how to present it. And then most importantly, you know, don't, don't really focus on, don't really focus on the way you are presenting because then then you get, you know, uh, you can, you get defocused on the actual content. If you are, if you're constantly looking for the perfect way to express yourself, then you lose sight of the actual content, the information. So you should focus on the information and, and the, the, the things will flow while. Okay. So I have a bit of experience. I, if, if that, if that can be considered fame, because, you know, it was shared on multiple sides, but. Nothing too, nothing too fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any alcoholic beverages before you got on stage and started speaking or no? Never, never, ever, never, never. No? That's, okay. that's a bad, that's a big no, no. 
uh, from my from my point of view because you have to be you have to be sober to be yourself if yeah. if you if you if you drink yeah i mean people people argue people argue that it, it it could make it a bit easier to you know to get comfortable but i don't yeah. i don't really believe that so yeah. especially especially for these presentations if it's an info, informal setting you know like like informal talks or something like that maybe maybe a beer but no yeah. i don't i don't really believe in this okay yeah so it's for me to feel comfortable for for every uh, podcast interview uh, i drink all the time you know oh okay nice is yeah. that is is that but <laughs> is that vodka is that vodka what you're holding hey, i'm not <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna deny it and i'm not gonna confirm it <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's dive in here. So your your background is a software developer, but you're also an indie maker, Robert. Uh, you're currently yeah. developing a Chrome extension. What does this extension do? Yes. So I am I'm develop, I'm building a no code uh, web scraping tool. By no code, no code is a fancy term that you know is used in in technical settings. You know, technical people like are familiar with that or non-technical people who are developers but also non-technical people uh who like follow these these no code trend you know so what is it what this means is pretty simple it allows you to it, it allows you to click and select elements on the page and set up your scrapers visually so you know that's what i that's what i solve and i opted for for a chrome extension uh, because of pretty serious technical technical reasons, I used to I used to support uh, like I, I used to have a web application and uh, and what what that uh, did is it embedded the page you were trying to scrape inside, but that's a uh, that's a big problem because of cross origin resource sharing. So there there's a there's a specific technical reason that that it didn't work and so you know i figured chrome extension is the way to go i mean browser extension is the way to go chrome yeah. being the most popular i i choose that so yeah i mean that's that solves the issue and and people are pretty pretty happy with it they don't get blocked on pages so they can they if if your browser if your browser displays the page as you would you would navigate it uh, you would navigate to it as a as a as a normal user then you could you could extract elements from it you could extract data from it uh, with my extension as well so that's the big big problem i uh, you know i hadn't solved okay yeah. how did how did you get into uh, web scraping yeah that's a that's an interesting story so a couple of years ago i was looking for some some deals price deals for samsung galaxy s6 still still have that phone still it's still my phone haven't haven't uh, switched from it and uh yeah i i you know i i manually browsed a couple of sites to find the best deals then it occur, occurred to me what if i could somehow automate all this and you know get notified on on good deals and then it occurred to me that this can be for multiple products as well so that was one scenario, but the, that scenario did not cause me to start this project yet. But a couple of months passed by and uh, I find myself browsing Stack Overflow, go figure, it's a pretty normal thing for the developer. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm looking for some 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 technical answer. Uh, I I I asked a question there, I think, and and looked looked for answers, like constantly browsed constantly went went back there and you know kept monitoring it if there are new answers and that was the second scenario and it finally caused me to dive into automation a little bit and uh, yeah and try to you know trying to figure trying to research this topic uh, a bit further didn't know the the term web scraping at that time. So I didn't know that this is a whole industry. It's a whole industry horizontal, to be honest, because there are many, many use cases, which I later found out. Mm -hmm. And so did a bit of research and uh, yeah, I figured that uh, uh, I, first I wanted to, to create some API, you know, as a developer, but later figured out that, hey, maybe people who are not technical, not developers or 
who are even developers but want to save time would rather use a, a visual solution where you can just click and see what you're what you're actually doing without needing to write uh, write a script and uh, yeah there you go this is how i get into i i got into and this is how datagrab was born it was it was almost five years ago oh wow okay how long did it take yeah. you to have your first version of uh, datagram Yes. So the, so the first version, uh, the first version took like one year, uh, but it was really bad and it, it, uh, it solved the issue. It attempted to solve the issue the way I, I mentioned previously, and that is to embed the page inside the web app, which didn't work. So I needed to, I needed to pivot, uh, to the, to the Chrome extension solution pretty fast. I mean, relatively fast. One year is a, is a big, one year is, is still a long time considering some of the great folks here in, in, you know, in tech, tech Twitter and the India community <laughs> just, just uh, push out the product in a month. Uh, so yeah, uh, thing is that I learned a lot. So uh, at, you know, uh, at, at the end of the day, that's, that's what matters. And, you know, I kind of have a process on for, uh, launching products, uh, relatively fast and yeah, got a couple of ideas actually non-related to web scraping, so I might might pursue them or some of them. Yeah. So, yeah. Is is there a free version and a paid version uh, yeah. when you download this? So the fir the the free version, yes. There's the there's the free version uh, of. Uh, let me put it this way. You can run you can run your scraper uh, in two ways. You can run it in your local browser. And there's also a cloud service that I offer, which allows you to run, run it in, in the background. So the, um, so the browser extension is free, uh, and you can run it, uh, locally in your browser. Uh, there, there is a, there is a 100 page limit and, uh, and it, it's also due to the fact that the, the memory, the, the, the browser's memory is going to fill up pretty fast. If you, if you leave it, uh, run to run on indefinitely, you know, so I, I needed to, I needed to, to do a cap to cap this limit so that, uh, it doesn't freeze. Mm -hmm. I'm talking from experience. I tried yeah. it out. So yes, there's a, free, there's, there's this free version. And then I offer a free trial of 1000, uh, cloud credits, which translates to page requests, uh, for the cloud service. Yeah. And I also. I also offer for regarding the paid plans, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm a bit more flexible than most of the alternatives. And, uh, that is because I offer both monthly subscriptions. If you know for a fact that you are going to have recurring, uh, data needs, for example, um, some of my, my customers are building products on top of data, you know, like aggregators and stuff. And so they obviously need, uh, need the data every month to be refreshed. And then there are people who are hobbyists and, you know, they just research something and need, need the data, uh, once. And so, uh, for them, I also offer like these bulk packages that you can purchase. Um, they don't, they don't expire obviously. And, uh. And yeah, you can, you can use that. So both, both ways, it's a bit more complicated, but I, I think I did a decent job on, you know, clarifying this on the pricing page or something. Yeah. Now, when, when you came to, uh, to marketing the app, when releasing it into the marketplace, did you do anything to, uh, to try to get more users to download it? And if so, did you make any mistakes, uh, the, the first couple of years or even the first few months? So the problem, the problem for me, the, the big problem for me was that I was living like a, I was building this like a hermit without any outside interactions whatsoever. Okay. Uh, and that was, that was for, for two years, I think <laughs> so I haven't heard of this. I haven't heard of this building in public. I have, I wasn't, you know, as, as many of us, yeah. I had my Twitter account lingering for years. Uh, I. I haven't took advantage of that. Yeah. Then I joined, then I joined, uh, uh, a discord group and, uh, yeah, a, 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 an amazing community actually. And, um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's called Lunadio. I have a good friend, uh, Ivan Omola who, who runs it. So that was the, that was the first interaction. It's a, it's an indie makers group. That's the bottom line. So it's an okay. indie makers group and uh, yeah, that got me, that got me you know, that got some traction, uh, people got interesting because I shared, you know, I shared my, my progress. I, I, 
I asked questions, you know, shared my opinions and stuff like that. So yeah, got involved in the community. And then I saw there that people got actually involved in, in on Twitter, got active, had some good results and decided, Hey, I might as well give it a shot. And then I got connected with, uh, with a few really, really, really great folks like Chaba Kishi, for example, pretty sure you heard about him. He's also a serial maker, uh, building small products. So yeah, got a, he became a good friend of mine and, uh, yeah, I, I, I just saw, I just saw the advantages this brings. So yeah. I keep continuing it. All right. Very, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Now, when it comes to indie hacking, uh, what do you believe are the most important fundamentals? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's an excellent question. So I would say, I would say that the, you know, if, if we are talking about a few tips I could give, uh, the, the first one is don't, don't take that much time as me, uh, like try to try to release a product as early as possible, something that, uh, something you have as early as possible. And regarding the, you know, regarding the product itself or the idea itself, I would say that the best case is if you have the problem yourself, because you can be your first customer. Now, this can be dangerous. This can be a trap that you got, you, you'll get so consumed in your own reality that there are, there's no one, no one except you who would use, you would use that. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, you definitely need to talk to people as well. Well, it's a good start. It's a, it's a, Hey, it's, it's, it's better to, it's better for you to be your own customer because then you would, you, you would be using your product on a daily basis. And at least, you know, that some of the things that you definitely think needs to be, uh, need to be improved as opposed to, you know, like choosing some field that is, uh, you might be passionate about, but you don't really, you don't really need that on a daily basis. So that's a, that's a, that's a great, that's a great thing to have to be your own customer. And yeah, I mean, leverage, leverage building in public, share your story. People are interested in your story. People can relate to you, to your story and people will trust you. If you share your, if you share your story, they, they will trust people. They won't trust faceless companies yeah. who are sharing nothing but marketing lingo and, and, you know, everything is perfect and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and for that, for that reason, I also, you know, I, I also recommend sharing everything challenges. Yeah. There are some cases like production outages that you might not want to dive into too much, but it's perfectly okay to, to be honest and share the, the issues that you had, you fix the, you fix them and the lessons you learn. So I, I know for myself, I would much rather test, uh, trust an indie maker who, who is doing this than a faceless big company who doesn't even, you know, care about its customers is it, which is why, uh, it, this is one of the, one of the advantages of as a user to choose an indie maker, because you know, that he's, uh, he's, he or she is the guy, a girl who, who, who is building this stuff. So, so that person, that person will get back to you as fast as possible. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty exciting thing. Okay. How are you able to juggle both, uh, both work and, and then also in the indie hacking here, you know, with the app, is there, is there any sort of habits that you do that has made you successful in juggling both things? Yeah. One of the hard, that's one of the hardest things that has to be one of the hardest things to, to, to figure out. Uh, to be honest, I, I, I cannot really, I cannot really say I have a well-defined process on that, but to me, it's, it's like pretty simple and I don't really have other options than, you know, work for full time for now, work full time, uh, eight hours. Uh, and then after that in the evenings, uh, I can, I can spend a, a bit, a bit more time on, uh, on indie hacking. Um, but to mention that I have a family, so I'm also with my child, playing with my child, te teaching her chess. Oh, really? Uh, daughter. How old, is, so, how old is she? Yeah, 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 yeah. How, how old is she? Yeah, she's she's seven. So first grade, first grade in my uh, in the school. There's the there's a zero grade here. So there's a there's a preparatory grade. I, I I'm not sure I'm not sure how it's called in English, but there's a there's a preparatory grade. It's it's like a zero grade, you know? Yeah. Which is pretty good for developers because it's zero based, so we know 
uh, we we can we can understand more easily. Yeah, <laughs> joking. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. She's she's seven, l learning learning the learning to read, yeah. by which which causes us to like uh, censor some of the things that we <laughs> want to say or write. Uh, yeah, I mean. Really? Uh, so uh, back to the back back to the point. It's pretty hard to it's pretty hard to juggle. It's pretty hard to juggle. I all all I can all I can say in this area, all I can recommend in this area is that if you if you commit if you commit like two hours or three hours, pretty 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 exhausting at some point. Three hours a day, make it count. Pre plan pre plan your stuff to do in the previous evening or whenever you have a bit of time and then just get to it and, and get it done. Don't get distracted. Try to, try to make it count. Try to do deep work. Uh, Carl Newport has a great book on that called deep work. And he, you know, he, he outlines some of the strategies in, in this area, but the bottom line is that try to focus, try to make it count. It can, it can, uh, it can be done. So you can, you can definitely make progress. It will take a bit. It will take a bit. And one other thing, uh, I actually, I actually recommend, but I cannot do, you know, like, like, like the Yoda's, like the Yoda's meme or something that I am teaching a skill of a power that I do not possess. Like, uh, what I, what I could recommend is that for folks who don't have families yet, so they have a bit of savings, maybe take the leap, maybe, maybe leave that company. If you have a, if you have a, a few months or years of saving, you know, take the leap, leave, leave the company and, and try to try to work full time. It would be obviously orders of orders of magnitudes, uh, you know, simpler and, uh, and manageable and faster to, to make progress on your project. I can't really do that because, uh, there's, there's, there isn't only about the, the salary that I'm, you know, I'm getting, and I obviously need to support my family. It's also the, the, the medical assurance, which okay. my family also benefits. So it's, it's much more complicated for me. I cannot really do that. Yeah. Uh, I cannot really do that. And won't actually won't until i you know i i have a i have a decent uh mrr can't really do that yeah so what's your goal do you mind yeah. sharing your your goal for for data grab is there like in in a, in a certain amount of time frame you want to have a certain mrr from this yes well i uh i i went with like 5k mrr at the end of this year not gonna make it uh and that is because virtually I, I, I have, I have a single customer right now monthly as for monthly recording revenue. However, I also did, I also did a couple of side gigs, which were related to web scraping. And the reason I did that, because then I, I can improve my tool according to the lessons I learned, you know, from, from real projects. So that's, that's another, that's another tip. Uh, if you can somehow, if you can somehow do gigs to leverage your tool, or if not to, to learn why it won't work with your tool and try to do, you know, deliver the, deliver the, the work manually, but then improve your tool accordingly. So that next time you can actually do it using your tool. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, hopefully, which would hopefully be faster. Right. So, so I don't, I don't have a, I, I don't really have a, a an MRR as per an MRR, uh, yet, but I did have, I did have several, several gigs. I, I used to have a, I used to have a gig, which was actually MRR. So it, it ran a couple of months. Um, so it, it's, it's like the, the vast, the, the, the vast majority of the money I'm making is, is still from consulting. I'm trying to, you know, improve my tool, but yeah, I'm, I have an exciting, I have an exciting and big, big feature that I'm, I'm, I'm planning. And that would actually, that would actually make things much, much more flexible and, uh, you know, make, make data grab much more powerful. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll market it. Uh, I'll market, I, I, I will really, you know, double down on marketing as well. It's always, it's, it's always this feeling that, uh, I could, I could market it, but you know, it's not that powerful. It's, it might not be that powerful that people would actually find it useful. I'm not, not saying you cannot use it. Uh, it, there are many, many scenarios when it's ideal, but I feel that, you know, if I could make it much more powerful and then 
push the button, the marketing button, and launch it, launch it on product hunt and stuff like that, it would benefit me more. So you know that's what I'm planning. Marketing, it's it's marketing year, <laughs> but I need to improve it. Uh, I need to improve it uh, considerably. Okay. All right, Robert. Well, listen, where can others learn about you and, uh, and Datagram? I'm on Twitter at Robert Balaji, uh, ZSI. Uh, so that's, as, as my name and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much only on Twitter and the Datagram site on is, is datagram.io. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm on that, but mostly on Twitter. I'm, I'm interacting, uh, I'm interacting on Twitter. All right, everybody, I'll include, uh, Robert's uh, Twitter handle in the show notes. As well, Robert, thanks so much for uh, for coming on Innovators Can Laugh. Everybody listening, uh, hey, if you enjoy this episode, tell others about it, uh, where we interview some of the most innovative uh, indie hackers and startup founders in Europe. All right. Thanks for listening and uh, see you guys next week. This is Eric signing off. Thanks, Robert. La revedere. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yep. Have a good day. Thanks for listening to the show. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you could give us a review and star rating. Also, don't forget to sign up for the ICO newsletter at innovatorscanlaugh.com where you can get the bio and details of each guest. Thanks. <laughs>